Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and today we are reacting to the news that Tony Pulis has been sacked by Sheffield Wednesday after just 10 games. I'm going to look at a few of the possible candidates to take over the job at Hillsborough, so let's get straight into the video. Yes guys, I hope you've had a very nice Christmas. It might have been a bit quieter than usual. I hope you got exactly what you wanted though underneath the tree. I hope Santa brought you exactly what you wanted. For me, Father Christmas came up big yet again. He bought me the match annual 2021. Now we're on to 21 years of these match annuals. So let's pop that in its place right behind me and crack on into today's video. So Tony Pierce has been sacked at Sheffield Wednesday after just 10 games in charge. Let me tell you, over his career, he has averaged 108 games at each club. That's about three seasons. So this just tells you what a huge shock this is for everybody, really. But Sheffield Wednesday, they've been playing really poorly. Even when Pulis came in, results haven't improved. And Pulis' record at Sheffield Wednesday is pretty poor. One win in 10 games, four draws, five losses they're still in the relegation zone and it's not been good football for Wednesday and the chairman he's had enough he's made a change very very quickly I think a lot of us have been taken by surprise especially the fact it was announced at midnight wasn't it last night trying to sneak this news out under the rug but we've picked up on it and Sheffield Wednesday are yet again searching for another manager this will be their third manager of the season after Gary Monk went out early Tony Pulis has come in and he's out the door just after Christmas not the best Christmas present for him but now they're looking for their third manager in a matter of months. Now at Sheffield Wednesday, everything seems to come back to the chairman, Dejvon Chansiri. Sorry for that pronunciation, but Chansiri seems to be the root of a lot of problems at that club. There were rumours he wouldn't get on with Pulis. Pulis is very hard hitting, very straight talking, doesn't mess about with the truth, doesn't beat around the bush. It seems like the two have had some sort of disagreement here and Pulis is out of the job. But Chansiri himself, he's in real trouble. He's got the club into real trouble, not paying the players in full. They've had a lot of complaints from the players, hasn't refunded money to the season ticket holders at Hillsborough for the games they've missed. Even making up companies to sponsor the club. They've got the most expensive tickets at home in the Football League. The shirt prices are astronomical compared to other clubs in the Championship. There's a lot of things wrong with Sheffield Wednesday and a lot of them come from Chan Siri himself. So which manager would like to take on this job? It's obviously a huge club in the Championship, a great fan base, some decent players there as well. But the chairman is not the best in the business, is he? You could find yourself out of a job before the end of the season if you take this one. But let's have a look at four of the big names in the running at the moment. Now favourite for the job, a bit of a surprise name for me, unemployed boss Gus Poyer, obviously the former Sunderland manager where he was most famous, also managed Brighton in England and was sacked on live TV, wasn't he, during the Confederations Cup, but at Sunderland he did a brilliant, brilliant job, he kept them up against the odds, he even took them to a League Cup final and the Mackhams absolutely loved him. Since then he's been a bit of a globetrotter really with mixed results, quite the CV, he's managed to put together a load of experience from a load of different clubs. He went to AEK Athens where he won 18 out of 28 games and did pretty well in Greece. The fans liked him there. He did all right. Then he went to Betis in Spain where it was a much worse story. Only 11 points from 11 games in La Liga. Not a good relationship with the board and it eventually led to his dismissal after only a few months. Then he thought he'd try his luck in China with Shanghai Shenhua where he just had no control it seemed of the transfers of the board. The players were getting brought in. There's rumours that three players turned up to his pre-season training. He didn't know they were going to be signed and they're the unfittest and not good enough to play in the Chinese Super League. So he had his hands tied a bit in China. Didn't last too long there before going to Bordeaux. Obviously a big club in France and there he fell out with the board yet again. So for me, Gus Poy, if you look back, he's done a good job in England before, but he does seem to have these falling outs with board and members of the board, chairman, and just in general, the people who run the club as well. So I don't think he and Sheffield Wednesday, him and Chan Siri in particular, would get on too well. He has had success in England, as I've mentioned, with Sunderland. Did okay at Brighton as well, a reasonable job there. But for me, Gus Poy, he might be favourite as we speak at the time of recording. But I don't see this one happening. I don't think it would be a good appointment for Sheffield Wednesday either. Now, next on the list is another unemployed manager, Jose Marias. Now, in his last two seasons, he's been managing in South Korea and he's done a brilliant job with Jean-Buc Hyundai 
motors, two seasons he spent there, two titles he delivered, an absolutely remarkable win rate. He's got 60%, 51 wins from 85 games. He plays good attacking football by all accounts, a lot of positive reviews, and he's had really good experience throughout his career at a whole host of different clubs. If that name rings a bell to you, he's the former Barnsley manager, didn't do too well there, but also he's followed Jose Mourinho as his assistant pretty much everywhere Mourinho has been into Milan, Porto, Real Madrid, two spells at Chelsea. He's been a big, big part of Mourinho's backroom stuff. Then he's had a go at management himself. His last three jobs before the South Korea job hasn't been too successful. Kapati Lviv, I think that's in Ukraine, he was only there for 11 games and got four wins before he left the club. Then Barnsley, three wins from 15 games. There's a bit of a pattern developing here. And then AEK Athens, three wins from 14 games. So you've seen there three of his last four jobs, 11, 15 and 14 games in charge. For me, he's not a long-term appointment for Sheffield Wednesday, despite his success with Hyundai Motors in South Korea. It's not looking like a long-term successful appointment for Sheffield Wednesday. And I think if they go for Marais, it could be another sacking this season. That really could be the situation Sheffield Wednesday find themselves in. He doesn't seem to last more than half a season at most of his clubs. And I think we saw with Barnsley, it didn't quite work out. So for a Sheffield Wednesday to go for him in the championship again would be a huge, huge risk. Another unemployed manager would be grateful to have a go at this job, but I'm not sure this is a great appointment for Sheffield Wednesday. Two managers for me to talk through now and two managers with championship experience, all importantly for Sheffield Wednesday, although they've just got rid of who is a very experienced man. But next on the list is Danny Cowley, one of the EFL's finest managers. I really like Danny Cowley. No job, of course, since he got sacked from Huddersfield last season at the end of the season. They appointed Carlos Corbran. And you have to say that's kind of worked out for them. There were a lot of critics, including me, who thought they should have stuck with Danny Cowley. Corbran's results are here or there, wins, losses, you know, not too much consistency, but they are playing nice football, which Cowley may not bring you. Anyway, he came into Huddersfield when they'd just been relegated from the Premier League and they were struggling at the bottom of the championship and he came in and got the job done. He kept them up with 13 wins, 11 draws and 16 losses. That's a 32% win ratio and with a Huddersfield side that was sinking like a stone, a lot of players didn't really want to be there. Cowley came in and did an amazing, amazing job just as he has done throughout the rest of his career. Concord Rangers, his win percent was 52. Lincoln City, his win percent was 53 and in between those two, Braintree Town, his win percent was 49%. So over his career, He's been absolutely exceptional. And even though it didn't quite go the way he wanted at Huddersfield, I think you have to say his first job in the championship, his CV is only stronger for taking that job and giving it a crack. There are a lot of teams who wanted him to pry him away from Lincoln City. He eventually chose Huddersfield, which was a bit of a shock, but he got the job done there. So would he be tempted by another relegation battle with Sheffield Wednesday? They could offer him big money. They could offer him a huge club, the biggest club of his career so far. I think he might be tempted by this one, him and his brother, Danny Cowley. I mean, oh, what a manager he would be for Sheffield Wednesday. He's done it before in the championship. He's another unemployed manager. I don't think he'll be unemployed for too much longer. One of the best available, in my opinion. I think he'd be an outstanding appointment. He really could keep Sheffield Wednesday up. And finally, the final manager I'm going to talk about is another unemployed manager with a load of experience. Paul Cook, the former Wigan boss. We saw what he did in 2020 and last season with Wigan. It was absolutely exceptional, wasn't it? They were one of the informed teams in 2020 after a pretty poor start to the season, found themselves up to 13th place, which is where they finished before it was all nastily taken away from them from off the field wrongdoings. They had a points deduction and they were relegated at the end of the season. Their squad was completely dismantled. Paul Cook left as well. Very sad situation at Wigan Athletic, but Paul Cook is an exceptional manager, a really good manager in the championship, and he could get the job done as well for Sheffield Wednesday. It's not just at Wigan he's had success either. Promotions with Wigan, of course, from League One, Portsmouth from League Two, and Chesterfield as well from League Two in recent years. He knows how to get the job done. He always makes his team work really hard. But yet again, Wigan were playing some exceptional football. I keep saying exceptional because Paul Cook's team were really exciting to watch. They scored a lot of goals. It was a talented squad he managed to put together. I think if Wednesday get him in, it'll be a real bit of a coup for them. They're really, really good to watch Paul Cook teams. I really enjoy watching him and his interviews. He's got a bit of personality 
as well. I think he'd be a really good hire for Sheffield Wednesday. Between him and Danny Cowley, I think it's very, very close. Both very experienced. And there's a few good options on the table for Sheffield Wednesday. Both of these very, very near the front of the running for me. So what next for Sheffield Wednesday? Well, Neil Thompson's going to be in caretaker charge until a full-time appointment is found, a replacement for Tony Pulis, who can come in and lead Wednesday up the table. Can they stay up this term? I mean, if you look at their squad, the likes of Callum Patterson, Aidan Flint, I know he's been injured, Izzy Brown, Kieran Westwood, Josh Windass. It's a decent championship squad, one that certainly shouldn't be in the bottom three, but they've certainly not been performing this season, despite all of these problems that I've mentioned, the off-the-field issues, the chairman, the players not getting paid. They're only actually three points away from safety in the championship, which perhaps tells you how poor the bottom of the league has been so far this season. The likes of Derby, Wickham struggling as well. Rotherham haven't played many games in recent weeks. There's a lot of struggling teams down there, so they do really have a chance of staying up. In fact, in fact if they beat Middlesbrough in midweek, they could find themselves outside of the relegation zone. Who'd have thought it? So the Sheffield Wednesday job perhaps might not be such a relegation dogfight if the right manager can come in and get them sorted. Now, for me, I would go for Danny Cowley. I think he's such a good manager, still young, still exciting, got some really fresh ideas. I think Paul Cook would be a brilliant second choice if Cowley can't be convinced. I think Cook deserves another shot in the championship, perhaps with a more stable club he would fancy after what happened with him at Wigan. He probably doesn't want to go through that turmoil all over again. So for me, Danny Cowley, number one, Paul Cook, number two, be happy to see either of them get the job. I think Gus Poyer would be a real risk for them to pick. Now, guys, let me know who you think should be the next Sheffield Wednesday manager in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed this one. There's going to be more content coming from me in the new year. I know I've been away for a while. Work's been a bit mad, but we are back now with more Football League content, more videos like this. Let me know a couple of words who you want to be the next Sheffield Wednesday manager. But for now, that is it, and I'll see you on the next one.